Yeah. Looks like they're all ready though now. They're all on the main menu. They're all on file three. <laughs> file right. three is a little bit faster than file two, believe it or not. So I think I think they're gonna get ready to go. Uh, the timer started. I don't know if that if if they meant to start the timer, but I don't think so. Oh boom, there they go. All right, they're off. All right, here we go. So yeah, so like uh Brad said in the beginning here, they're gonna be skipping over the bottles uh text. And then they're going to be just trying to collect those six empty honeycombs here in Spiral Mountain um, just as fast as they can before they enter the lair because nobody's going to come back to Spiral. So. And, uh, so you don't have the talent trot move yet. So the fastest method of movement is rolling and then uh, fluttering out of that roll so you don't get the stop at the end. All right, so King and Stiv both getting the first backflip up to Kali Wobble. Helfos and Hag getting the second try. Uh, that, that first backflip can be a little tricky sometimes. You just gotta kind of have lucky movement, uh, kind of a good angle. Uh, only loses about three seconds every time you miss the backflip, so not too big of a deal right now. Lots of technical movement in Spiral Mountain. It's really hard to, you know, to get a really good time, but it looks great when it's done fast. Yeah. Uh, I actually don't know. Is Stiv the only person still to have a sub two minute Spiral Mountain? I think so. Yeah, so he's like the only person to really master that movement all the way. But looks like King has a little bit of an early lead on Stiv, just a little bit better of a jump out of the house section. Um, with Hellfoes and Hag following really close behind. The 100% run is going to last probably around two hours and 10 minutes, if I had to guess, just based on uh, average times across yeah. these runners with Stiv hopefully finishing somewhere in the 205 range and everybody else finishing in the 205 to 210 range. But we all know this is Banjo-Kazooie. Anything can happen. A death in this game yeah. means you lose minutes of time. Doing bottle skip right now, uh, landing on that little edge of the platform there. You can skip over it. Oh, but... uh Hag actually missed misses it. it. Yep. And Matt is going to put him in last now because Hellfuzz was behind but got it. So, all right, they're all done with Spiral Mountain, and they're going to be making their way to the first level, which is Mumbo's Mountain. So, uh, Mumbo's Mountain, pretty easy level, kind of like the beginner, obviously, getting started with the run level. Um, but we do see they'll get access to the moves as soon as they enter the level. So you'll see them getting in a talent try and then kind of abusing, you know, having all those moves early. Real quick um, explanation of FFM for those who don't know. It's called Furnace Fun Moves. Uh, if you have zero lives in a mini game in Furnace Fun and you die, uh, the moves are sort of stored into this uh, this address that is supposed to give it back to you when you enter the game uh, again after you know coming out of the mini game. But because you game over, you don't enter the game again. Uh, so then it doesn't actually give that back until you enter a level. And so when you enter Mumbo's Mountain, it gives you those moves. And we uh, have eggs and feathers are the only moves that are not learned uh, from our file to set this up. And uh, that's because we are just we just need those uh, resources from bottles. Um, there's just too many places where we need eggs and feathers. All right, so they're entering the termite tower. You'll notice that unlike, you know, the casual game experience where you had to turn into the termite to climb this thing, they're actually able to do what's called slope abuse to climb the termite tower as fast as possible. Basically, as long as Banjo's shadow um, comes off of the slope, you can jump right back on the slope and it'll act like you haven't been on it before. And so that gives you those extra jumps. And King kind of suffering through that. He ends up in last place after the Termite Tower when he was in first. Yeah, Stiv grabbing a little bit of a, a lead there, a little bit more, um, but you know, it, it's still close. And Mumbo's Mountain, there's a lot of different little things that can happen here. All right, so Stiv collecting the Orange Ginger, making his way down the hill. Um, Brad, do you want to kind of tell them jumping in Talon Trot, kind of timing those jumps, things like that. Just yeah, three so basic movements. If you hold A long enough, it actually gives you a an, an extended jump. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but if you time it correctly, you can kind of give you like a little bit of a, a shorter jump and you want to time those so that you land on the notes right. 
Um, jumping in Talent Rot is faster because uh, you instantly accelerate to full speed, and you want to keep jumping or else you get a slowdown at the end. All right, so, so eggs. Helfo's got hit twice by Conga there. Kind of falls <clears throat> really behind these other three runners. <laughs> wasn't even able to get the early jiggy grab because he wasn't on the section. Stiv going for the one shot. Conga gets it. It's about a second faster to do that one shot as opposed to shooting three eggs, making all the way to the grunty platform. But it's it's really hard. The angle is really precise. And had had little weird here went for the late conga and actually missed. He's gonna have to reset up this oh, angle. Oh no, Helfo's and down. finally got him. All right, Helfo's fell down. That's that's a little unfortunate. But All right, Helfo's the getting the one shot over to the witch switch. Yeah, most runners they usually shoot three shots at that angle just because they want to make sure that conga does get hit. You know, you don't want to come back to that platform. But obviously, shooting the one egg and getting all the way to the witch switch platform is the fastest. So, yeah. Elfo's um, behind King, picking up some ground on Haganator throughout that section. So that was good. Stiv actually misses one of the backflips into Mumbo's eye. Only loses about three seconds again, like we said earlier. But, uh, yeah. It's a really APM high level. So, you know, lots of opportunity for error in this really short level. All right, Stiv weaves in between Mumbo's um, little pillars there for the notes. You don't want to wake up Mumbo yet. We actually aren't going to wake up Mumbo until Freezy's peak. So uh, we don't want to talk to him just yet. Don't need to wake him up more than once. Stiv does a good job with uh, Juju there. So kind of after Juju, Stiv's just got to collect the rest of the notes, and there's a couple easy jiggies to get, and he'll be going for a uh, blue Jinjo skip. Um, do you want to kind of describe that one, Brad? Yeah, so um, a lot of the jiggies in this game have the, you know, this, they have this animation, but a lot of them can be skipped by either being in the water or uh, flying into it, or what's called a damage cancel. You can take damage on the same frame that you collect the jiggy. Um, that's the, the most difficult way to do it, but what Stiv's going to do here is he's going to try to jump with the Jiggy in his hand into the water. Nice. He got it. And now, uh, if you land on land with the Jiggy in your hand, you're still going to do the dance, but if you do a little jump back into the water there, it just skips it, and you don't have to watch that extra long 10 Jiggy dance at the end of the level. So, All right, Stiv's so Stiv's, finishing up. Yeah, Stiv finishing with a 738. He'll actually be the only uh, sub-740 Mumbo runner here. Which is like actually, surprisingly, King. not that great for him. Yeah. Uh, but Hag missing the... the... <clears throat> oh, crap. Okay. So he so gets Hag Nader has now got him in last place, yeah. Just barely in last place behind Helfos. So Helfos picking up some time on Hag Nader there. Yeah, that last Jiggy dance is like 10 seconds long. So it definitely, uh, it definitely takes a long time. Oh, that's right. The timer did start early, so that's actually not as bad of a Mumbo's Mountain as it, it oh, okay. seems like it was. <laughs> so then they all got they all got sub-8 Mumbo's then, so that's yeah. not terrible at all. So making use of this slope abuse again here um, to scale the the mountain here without having to use the termite to get that jiggy. Um, and, uh, you know, Hag struggled with it a little bit, but he finally catching back up. All right, now so we talking probably... to Brentilda. Uh, yeah, 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 go ahead, yeah. Yeah, I'll talk about Brentilda. So... Uh, for a long time, uh, people used to run this game and just pray and hope that they get the uh, grunty questions right at the end when, when you do Furnace Fun because they're totally random for every for every file you play through the game. Um, and eventually, this calculator came out where, uh, and I don't remember who, who made it. Um, Very but, long uh, time ago. And it, this has every single pattern in it and you can enter in your questions and answers and it will actually tell you the most likely possible answer remaining. And so it eventually became more worth it for runners to actually get these Brentilda question answers. Well, because there's something like 250 patterns, right? Like 256? Yeah, 256. So yeah. There's just, you could literally just lose your entire run from that at the end, and it's just worth it for the 15 to 20 seconds it takes to go out of the way and get Brentilda rather than lose your run. All right, so Stiv entering TTC first. Um, Treasure Trove Cove is kind of seen as the first kind of run killer level in terms of Banjo-Kazooie speedruns because 
there's a lot of flying sections and flying can somewhat be difficult for the newer runners. Um, but we're going to be seeing Stiv and all the rest of the runners are going to be skipping a lot of those jiggy animations by collecting all of those collectibles in flight, um, like Brad was talking about earlier. So it can kind of be annoying if you land, if you, you know, miss flight, then, you know, you have to pick those up and obviously each collectible adds time. So gotta learn flying, need these feathers. There's tons of them that we use in this level. So detouring for them is definitely uh, slower than just learning the move within the run here. Yes, yeah, Stiv executing the quick dive very nicely into this second part of the hull of the ship. Um, yeah, quick diving is this little fun thing where if, you, uh, if you're in an animation, you can actually do it with gold feathers as well and enter the water as that animation is, is happening. Uh, you just plummet through the water. It doesn't apply the water physics to you just yet. Um, so you can do that to dive down a lot faster. All right, so Blubber ending up in Africa for King. Gonna have to get the late jiggy <laughs> grab there. Did any of them get it? Uh, well, Stiv so far did not, King did not. Yeah. And we're waiting to see what Hellfuzz gets when he leaves. Stiv picking up that note in flight, doing very good. He's gonna enter this uh, treasure chest in flight. A, as soon as he gets the jiggy to maintain flight, and then he's gonna beak bomb over to the X. And yeah, all four of our runners not really getting a good blubber, all of them having to uh, yeah. run over to the Jiggy. So King gonna be going for the treasure chest. Jiggy now gets it. And I think the hardest part isn't really the treasure chest, it's just getting this one random note over to the side yeah. for the first section at least. You just come so close to landing every time. Yeah. So, all of them getting it though, not struggling with that. Getting the proper flaps. Yeah, flaps in this uh, game with your flying is actually a really good way to uh, visualize your movement um, and, and kind of space everything out. So you know, like, okay, certain number of flaps, now I gotta hold down. All right, Mixed flying moving a lot second easier. Second line section now. Gets the alcove jiggy. He's going to be picking up the orange Jinjo and then flapping all the way with the beak bomb to the top of the lighthouse. Um, and this this was kind of a newer route that came out in TTC as soon as we knew that, you know, we had access to beak bombing. Um, I'm trying to think of how how recent this has been a route, but Cole created this route with well, since, you, since, right? Like yeah, way Cole, back when. Cole, Cole and I, Captain Cole and I did a lot of routing when FFM was, was uh, found. So, you know, this is, I mean, the... This is pretty standard now. All right, Stiv going for another massive quick dive down to the bottom of that honeycomb. You really want to get that quick dive, otherwise you have a chance to kind of get trolled by Snacker the shark. You don't want to be in the water for too long. And Stiv now going for Nipper Skip. You want to kind of talk about that one, Brad? Yeah, so uh, right after you cancel Nipper's text, you're actually invulnerable for a little bit. So you can jump inside of uh, his shell there and get kind of stuck in the back. You take oh, a and damage. Helfos misses a note. He's got to go all the way back up on the oh, ramps. Oh, no. <laughs> so oh, now is Stiv. going to catch up here. Stiv's got to be careful here. He's going to kill these crabs because he was low on health. Oh, did he get hit twice by he, Nipper? He, he got hit before he jumped for the Jiggy, so Ooh, he had to okay. get an extra health there. He was at two and got down to one. All right, Haggett missing the quick dive, having to dive now. Hopefully Snacker leaves him alone. Seems like he's got a good angle on the shark. That's good. So yeah, now Hag and Helfo is just neck and neck. Now King being super King struggling a little yep. bit with this. Okay, he's fine. Crab's not being nice. Yeah, so the, the kind of like optimal technique would be like to just jump for the jiggy and just pray to God the crabs aren't beneath you, but sometimes you just don't know where they're gonna be and if you're low health, it can it can kill a run. So this is also a race and we, we told them to try not to forfeit. So. Oh there you go, look at that. Hag and Helpo's going for the jump and having good crab spawns. Basically tied neck and neck here. Yeah. So Helpo's picking up exciting. some extra eggs on his way out. Stiv making his way to the last flight section. Yeah, I think Stiv had a really good leaky skip there. Yeah, he did. King setting up leaky skip as well. Hopefully he gets it. Yep, good bounces. And Stiv going for the Jinjo beak bomb. <laughs> Through the Jinjo to the empty honeycomb. Flaps up to beak bomb to this alcove. 
Hopefully gonna pick up this one and fly. He's got kind of a wonky camera angle, but ends up making it work. Helfo's actually missing Leaky Skip. So had picking up the lead on him there. Questionable. Ooh, wow. Very close beat bump from King. But it ended up being really fast because he got the honeycomb at the end. Yeah. It's a nice little time save if you can land that honeycomb beak bomb. Yeah, so Leaky Skip is just really nice. It's just kind of like shooting those eggs in the bucket without going down there to talk to Leaky. Oh. Had also Egg getting a really risky one. Looking beak bomb right there. That was. Oh, and Helfos misses. It's okay though. Stays in flight. That's the most important part. Is you want to stay in flight for this section? Gets it. Proud of these TTCs here. Um, yeah, actually gets a good, good height on that beak bomb. Yeah, I don't think any of them landed for any of those collectibles. So that was really good on all of them. Making sure to keep this race nice and close. Stiv obviously in the sandcastle already. Getting that nice early lead just from being that world record holder. But uh, yeah, all of them doing pretty well. So I guess Stiv is going to be coming up to the first Death Warp. If you want to kind of lead him through that, Brad. Yeah, um, so, you know, Death Warping in this game is a lot uh, faster because it takes you right to the start of the level. And when you're done with collecting everything, you don't need to, uh, you know, get anything else. So you just die, go back to the level, start of the level. And right there, uh, skipping that Jiggy Dance actually uh, works by having it in your hand as you die, and it still counts that you got it. So Stiv was able to skip that 10 Jiggy Dance again there at the end. Everyone else in the sandcastle now. This really, you know, with, with with how well they performed all of the the major things in TTC, but how many, you know, oh, how little King mistakes. actually misses the death warp on the crab. Has to watch this credit. Yeah. So now at least he didn't kill the crab. Yeah. Um, but the you know all the little mistakes really add up in this game, and that's why you know Stiv right now is uh, quite a bit ahead. Um, but you know the other three racers are pretty close. Hag also misses Hag it. Hag also misses it. <laughs> and Helfos okay. gets it, so now Hag is so now Helfos in last place. The lead over Hag there. Yeah. All right, Stiv with some little wonky movement hitting the switch to uh, raise the platforms to get to Clankers. And Clankers Cavern, a little bit more of a difficult level than you would imagine because the whole level essentially is based on cycles. In fact, a lot of the top runners like to call it Clankers Cycles. So. Brad, do you want to kind of talk through like what how Stiv's movement is affecting what's going to happen later in the level? Yeah, so when, right as soon as you enter the level, a timer basically starts. And uh, Planker himself, this, you know, garbage grind, Grunty's garbage grinder, is kind of got this buoyancy movement in the water where he bobs up and down. And later on when you raise him, the tail also moves, the bolt goes up. The gills open, the fins go up and down, and this affects a lot in the level. And this is all based on a timer when you start the level. It's not when you raise it. So your movement up from the very beginning of the level to uh, when you first enter the tooth, so it's about two and a half minutes of movement, is critical. And on top of that, you've got, as Stiv enters down here, you can see our fish gloop here, which spits out these air bubbles. And if you're not fast enough, uh, It'll be a little bit too far off screen, and that air bubble will not spawn. It's, it'll make call the it sound. Ghost bubble. Yeah, ghost it'll bubble. Make, yeah. yeah, exactly. It'll make the sound, but it won't spawn. So this is really critical. And that jump at the start off the pipe on top of it um, saves you a cycle if your movement is really good. Yeah, and they all got it, by the way. So They all got it, bubble. so, you know, good for them. They're all going to be hoping to get not the ghost bubble, so, yeah. So it sucks in the beginning because you know if you miss like a note or if you you know if you even spend too long on top of the platforms, you'll miss that gloop bubble and then you kind of have to go for the slower cycle. So automatically you're losing eight seconds for losing time early. So kind of a risk reward penalty kind of system. Yep. So Stiv grabbing that extra bubble before he makes his way back up, and he's still on the cycle timing because he's still trying to get on top of the platform to shoot out the gold tooth right as Clanker raises out of the water. So we'll have to see if he gets it. And Hag and, you know, going for a different movement. cycle here. Swimming movement is hard in this game too. Um, something that a lot of people probably didn't know is holding R makes you turn faster. 
so that really helps with swimming movement. And looks like Stiv got it. Good, good two cycle there. Hag and Helpo's both unlocking Clanker, raising up right now while King is on his way up. Gets the air bubble, so he'll be on his way for that fast cycle as well. And King, like I said, you know, King's been on that PB pace the last couple runs, and right now he's ahead of the 204 boys, even though he's holding the 208. So, yeah, like I said, really close race. Anything can still happen. Like Brad said, any death for any of these runners later in the level could lose upwards of seven to eight minutes. So we're really going to hope that hopefully for the marathon's sake, the runners are playing it safe. They're going to be going for those risky strats as much as they can, but probably also keeping it safe, grabbing extra health whenever they feel they need it. So Stiv doing the rings. Him and uh, King are both inside Clanker while Hagen Helpo is collecting the blue Jinjo. Stiv getting the 22 on the rings. Oh, and Helpo just barely misses the tooth. Yeah. So he falls a little bit behind. Yeah, it looks like he would have had a cycle ahead of uh, Hag there, but he missed it. So Hag was a little bit further behind. All right, I guess Stiv is going to be going for bolt jump here. Pretty soon. He's usually pretty good about getting it. So he's going to jump off here. He's going to flutter at the exact moment. Oh, Ooh. and gets it with the ground pound. Saves it, so. Yeah, ground that. pounds, you get a little bit of height uh, before you start slamming down. So he used that to save himself there. All right, Hag getting the good jump off of the second green ring. Stiv going for honeycomb backflip here. And after bolt jump, Stiv is still on another cycle here to enter the blowhole of Clanker. So he's got to make sure that all of his movement here is also really solid. And just because of the way the, the, the me mechanic works, kind of, this is actually a 10 second cycle. There you go. King getting the uh, bolt jump without the additional ground pound. So had a little bit better of timing than Stiv did. All right, Stiv got the cycle time to spare. And see, Hag will be the next one to go for bolt jump. Kind of jumped early. Misses the flutter altogether, so yeah. that's actually, it's not as bad. The worst thing you want to do is try to go for the bull jump and end up ground pounding and then still miss. That ends up losing you about 14 seconds, ends up losing you about two cycles on the blowhole. Whereas, obviously, if you just miss and fall in the water, you'll still get the thin cycle. So you only lose like seven seconds. Uh, that would still be like, you still lose 10. Because the it's like when the, the bolt opens is like 10 seconds. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Hag struggling with... Okay, he ends up getting it on second try. Not bad. Coming up right behind the health hose. And we missed, uh, we missed the gold feather room with Stiv, but we'll talk about it as King gets it. Because that room can be very... Uh, can be very tricky for casual players, but we use a nice little trick to get by it. Big bomb in this room saves a nice amount of time. Yeah. All right, so All right. we'll notice that King will get gold feathers, and then he's just going to kind of hug this seam on the right half of the room. And as long as you're hugging that kind of right seam where the floor meets the corner, you won't take any damage from the saw blades. So very useful for just kind of walking through here without using gold feathers. So yeah, Hagen Helfos just kind of keeping up with each other. Stiv making his way into Muty Snippets pretty soon. Real quick before we get there, uh, if you guys didn't know, there's some raffle prizes for the stream. Uh, bits do count. Uh, Five dollars gets you a select, gets you in for a Celeste team code. Ten dollars for a Beast Coast backpack. Fifteen dollars Beast Coast zip up hoodie. $20 Beast Coast Team Jersey, and $25 for an N64 bundle, including the game SM64, the console itself, and a controller all signed by Cheese05. 
the cheese of five, dude. All right, so Stiv's going to be entering his last section of clankers with the long swimming section. And we do this entire section underwater because we're hoping to drown at the end of the level in order to death warp us back to the beginning. Because the clankers entrance is way, way, way far back and we don't want to walk all the way over there. Um, so I guess, Brad, do you want to kind of, since Stiv is going to be out of here and most people would assume that he's going to bubble gloop next, you want to kind of lead them through how the RBA route is going to work and how it's going to be different than normal? Sorry about that. My mic came out. <laughs> oh, no worries. Sorry, I've probably killed people here. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, you said snippets. Uh, just about the, the RBA route. Oh. How is it different that Stiv is going to be going to Freeze Easy Peak next and not yeah. bubble gloop? Yeah, so... Right after Clankers, normally, uh, if you're doing the, like, I guess, quote unquote, intended level order, because you can do Gobies and Mad Monster, you know, in different order. But normally, you'd go to Bubble Gloop after this. Uh, but they're going to actually do Bubble Gloop last. And in order to, you know, open Freeze Easy Peak, you have to go over by Bubble Gloop. Um, but they're actually going to head over straight to the uh, Freeze Easy Peak area and uh, get into the level without opening it. Yeah, and they're going to was... do this with a beak bomb. Uh, and this is why Furnace Fun Moves is required to do this route. Because you, you wouldn't normally have that move yeah. before entering the level. Yeah, so like normally, you know, we had no idea of this route for several reasons. Obviously, if we wanted to enter Freeze Easy Peak early, you needed Beak Bomb, and Beak Bomb is only located in Freeze Easy Peak. Um, but also besides that, um, this route wasn't even accessible on NTSC version for a long time because we didn't have access to taking the B outside of the Click Clock Wood lobby until Stiv found a way to clip the bee out um, using the 765 note door. Uh, this was about a week after we got it back from SGDQ 17. So ever since then, we've been kind of meddling with the route, changing it up. And now this is kind of the big top route that a lot of the top runners use. So Stiv activating the flight pad, gonna be making his way over to the flight pad and hopefully getting the clip out with the beak bomb uh, early, so. He's gonna use some flaps here again to kind of dictate his movement and uh, hopefully he gets it here. This is a bit of a tricky clip. Looks like a very good clip, yep. So he's flapping up. Now he's just trying to beak bomb his way into the door. Good height and there's wow. freeze easy peak. That was, that was actually really, really good. That was fast. He did some YOLO beak bombs there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so freeze easy peak, kind of another, uh, Kind of another easier level in terms of the movement, but some tricky parts as well that we'll get to. A little bit of a break here for Stiv. Uh, he's going to hit this first twinkly muncher and then deload the other ones so that he can just sit here and wait. Save some time actually with lag, and then he doesn't have to worry about missing one of the twinkly munchers. Yeah, the twinkly muncher section go. always makes me laugh because you can hear them spawn, but they don't actually spawn. All right, let's see. King taking a little bit longer to set up the clip, but gets it first try. Looks pretty good. Gets in as well. Pretty fast clip as well. Right, Helpo's coming up and Hag right behind him. That was really close, actually, because if he be found a little bit lower, he would have actually uh, hit the void out of bounds and had to have done the try the trick again. So Ooh, yeah. you got to be careful about that. Helpo's coming up to the clip. Also looks really nice. Good. Right, got it. Had going for a little bit of a YOLO setup here, but also oh. gets it. That looked so scary, man. That was a really sketchy setup with the flaps, but ends up making it work. Both, right, uh, everybody getting FP on the first try. Really cool. So uh, don't worry if you missed it because they all have to do it again as soon as they're done with this level. They all have to do that same beat bomb clip for the 450 note door skip. Now you don't have to. It's uh, it's a route that saves about uh, 10 seconds, give or take. So just a, a little, you know, step up for some of the top runners. 
All right, Stiv getting the pipe jiggy in flight, taking the sled down to Boggy. There's a nice little camera set up when you go around the tree. It kind of follows you as you go, if you have your camera zoomed out. And uh, if you do that, all you got to do is hold straight down to shoot the eggs at that star switch. And you can actually do it with it completely off camera, so that's kind of nice. A little time saver there. All right, can go going for Yolo for, Star. Going for Yolo Star here. If you uh, it. if you beak bomb up to that that uh, tree star, you can actually jump through it. And uh, it's kind of hard to time it with the how fast you're sliding, but uh, it saves a considerable amount of time over going through the star three you know three separate times in flight. We got a really good question in chat, Brad, and I, I don't actually know the answer, but I'm sure you do. We got a question asking how much time does FP early save? Uh, so by itself, like if you did that trick um, just to get in the level early and you didn't do the reverse B adventure route, that only saves you like 10 seconds. And that's pretty much just like, okay, I'm saving the time it takes to open the level because it's already quite a bit of a you know, a detour to open the level itself, but it's a detour to do the trick as well. Uh, however, if you incorporate that into the route with the uh, Reverse B Adventure, and all things considered, you save roughly a minute and like 10 seconds. So, uh, for a top runner, it's definitely worth it. Um, but it is a bit of a, you know, hard trick to start off with as a, as a newer runner, so. It's an intermediate to advanced trick. There are some, you know, sort of setups for it. All right, so Hag and Help, though, still kind of neck and neck through this whole thing. Stiv going to be making his way into Mumbo's in order to turn into our first transformation of the run into the Walrus. Um, nothing too difficult with the Walrus besides, obviously, he's going to be going for right leg during the race, which is kind of where you do some extra collecting as the Walrus while you're racing Boggy. So we're going to be entering our first wall, uh, our first boggy race. So get your wahays ready in chat. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, there's a lot of notes underneath the snowman legs, and detouring for them, you know, later on when you're already passing by them during the race is it, quite a bit slower. Uh, however, it's actually a lot harder to get them during the race, especially. Because if you're if you're even three flags behind Boggy, you lose. So starting over is a big time loss. Ag actually picking up some time on these beat bombs. Oh, oh and he misses right as I say it. Oh. Caster curse. So he's got to come over to this um this house to get another flight pad. So he'll be getting that extra Mumbo token. And this jump up to the chimney fly pad can be kind of annoying. He's got a he's got a hold A the whole time. There we go. Okay, got it. Yeah, like depending on your angle with your beak bomb, um, the camera like if you oh he misses God. again. Oh, he okay, stays in flight though. He stayed, he stayed in flight. Uh, the camera can kind of project you in a weird way, and you you actually like go lower when you don't think you would. He's really struggling with this. Okay. He's gotta get these. He's not gonna have enough beat bomb for the for the final. Oh no. He's, He's gotta get more feathers. feathers. Oh, this is a really big loss for Hag here. All right, Stiv collecting the notes here, making sure to still beat Boggy in the end. Squeezes out the victory. All right. Good job, Stiv. All right, Hag with one feather left, so he's got enough feathers to do the final beat bomb into Mumbo's hut. That was uh, that was definitely a big time loss, unfortunately. Not too bad, though. He's only maybe like 30 seconds behind. Still plenty of time to catch back up in this race. So, King doing the first boggy race. Picking up notes, like we said earlier. Stiv on his way back to Mumbo's. None of them getting wishy-washy. All of them turning into the walrus successfully on the first try. Which is good. We got uh, $25 from 
Mario fan. This is not Ram Emanuel. <laughs> and uh, for those who don't know, uh, $25 or more actually enters you into all raffles. Yeah, if you want to win the bag, the Celeste code, the jersey, the sweatshirt, or the N64 package, all you got to donate is $25 to twitch.tv slash speedrun. Yeah, get your, get your, get your merch on. All right, Hag going for right leg here, making sure to pick up everything, but not falling too behind. Good. Okay, you got it. So one thing about FP that makes routing really difficult is the present. Uh, you got to collect the three presents scattered throughout the level and give them back to Boggy's kids at near the entrance, which is quite a big detour. Unfortunately, you can't death warp and keep them, otherwise you would just, you know, do that last. Um, so you actually have to make a detour all the way over there just to give them, you know, to the kids. Oh, I didn't even uh, think about that, like getting all 100 notes, dying, and then just giving them the presents. Yeah. That's interesting. Yep. But, unfortunately, even on the Xbox version where you, you actually keep your notes when you die, you still don't keep the presents, so. So Stiv right here is actually going to make that detour right now. He's going to use a beak bomb to get over back to the start area really fast from the snowman and then take a little bit of fall damage here to set up for a death warp at the end of the level, entering Boggy's igloo. All right. Stays on the table, grabs the early jiggy. Santa Claus simulator giving the presents to the kids. I think that's I think that's what King's Freeze Easy Peak split is called is Santa Claus Simulator. Yeah, King so. KC. <laughs> Make sure you the over memer. Yeah. Make over sure you give all these guys follow. They're all really good runners. Um, and you know King KC does have some some funny names for his splits. <laughs> yeah, they uh, yeah all these runners have put you know obviously Stiv has put an extraordinary extraordinary amount of time into the game, but all these runners really. You know, this is kind of one of the only games they run, and they're they're definitely very, very good. At the game. They've earned their spot for sure yeah, on the leaderboards. Sure. Now, Stiv doing the banjo race here, um, getting the notes around the left leg, and uh, this race is quite a bit uh, more difficult if you're just trying to beat him as quickly as possible uh, because of a mechanic called rubber banding. So depending on how many flags ahead or behind Boggy you are, he will actually speed up or slow down. So if you're ahead of Boggy, like Stiv's going to get ahead of him here, and then you'll notice that Boggy is going to just pick up a ton of speed. Like here he comes, he's flying through. Um, but if you're way behind, the game gives you a chance to catch up. Um, same concept with Vile when you're, when you're trying to uh, beat Vile later on. So uh, if, you, if you're too far ahead, actually, at the end here, he will go so fast that you can't win. So the strategy is to get some of these notes through the race and then uh, be a little bit behind Boggy when you're right around that ramp that leads to the start of the level and then take your lead and uh, make a beeline for the finish. So Stiv collecting the 10th Jiggy. This is kind of one of the only extended Jiggy dances we have to watch. We currently have no way to cancel this yet. And then he's going to be going for this kind of risky swim that you're normally supposed to do with the walrus, but if you jump in the uh, icy cold water, uh, you'll get that animation cancel and, and uh, Banjo will swim to the bottom. So he's going to grab this honeycomb and then die to this ice cube back here. So it looks like uh, besides that one land uh, off of the snowman for Hag, uh, everybody had a pretty solid FP. Yeah, everyone was pretty good there. Alright, so like we said earlier, these runners are going to be going for 450 note door skip, so they're going to have to do the beak bomb out of bounds again. 
And would you say this one is a trickier angle than FP, or is it kind of easier? I think they use the same setup. It's kind of the same, the same angle clip. I think they use the same same kind of setup, um, but then you know that you have to use feathers rapid yeah. succession in order to get that upward angle into the loading zone. Stiv ends up using those eight feathers. I know that he he usually appreciates if he can get in there with seven, but he went for the safe eight. Um, now something I noticed. Uh, I don't know if you did, but that token on the blue present was still there for uh, Hellfoes. So he is going to have to pick up a backup somewhere. And oh, he wasn't able to get it during the boggy race. It's a little bit of an issue. Yeah, probably during the walrus race. It's a little bit of an issue with this route because uh, because you do uh, two transformations so quickly here, since we're going to Mad Monster Mansion next, the token route for the beginning of the run is actually really tight. So there's a couple of backups that Hellfoes might have to go for uh, in Mad Monster Mansion here. King going for the out of bounds now. Taking a little bit longer to set it up, but gets it again. Eight flaps, looks good. Awesome. So, hey, for any of you glitch hunters out there, I've got a special proposition for you. <laughs> You'll notice that we haven't said anything about Stiv in quite some time. That's because he's been doing this really long, annoying, slow, boring swim all the way over to MMM in order to open it up. Well, guess what? Me, Secret Humor Man, will give you, special glitch hunters, $100 American cash if you find a way for us to get into MMM early without having to swim all the way back there to open up the puzzle. This has been an open bounty on this game for about a year and a half now, and still nobody has claimed it. So all of, yous out, all of you guys out there, help us find this glitch. Help us find a way to get into this level early. It's $100. It's free. <laughs> Stiv actually getting a midair jump there for uh, anyone who noticed it. Um, they're actually, after you slide, uh, if you're in the air, even you still have one, you have one frame where you can press A and jump. Um, this has some some you know useful applications, but unfortunately not really in an RTA setting because it is a frame perfect trick. And I'm not you know saying, oh yeah, it's totally frame perfect, guys. You know, it actually is frame perfect. So, you know. Yeah, if you're lucky, you usually end up getting like one one or two every run you do kind of just get lucky you start to get that timing down hag again with that really risky setup in my opinion but ends up getting it now whatever works for and them he missed the loading zone don't quit oh. okay. okay all uh, right was really Got close it. To back in bounds and that would have been even worse he would have had to do the skip again so thank you all right Stiv on his way in mmm uh mmm one of my favorite levels in terms of the speed run you're going to be seeing a lot of very quick movement in and out of these very small rooms. So it's just about optimizing your movement within each of these rooms of the mansion and then, you know, moving on to the next room. Got $10 from Anonymous. GL Boy doing a great job. Thank you. GL Boy. Anonymous. GL GL. Yeah, so I, I want to go back to talking about MMM early just really quick. I know it's kind of a meme, but also, um, like right now, if we were to look at all the top runners, Stivity Bobo, he's kind of the only person who's got sub two hours for this run in his eyes. But if we didn't have to do that swim all the way back there, that swim takes a long, long time. Like it would definitely make sub two more possible for the top runners and not just Stiv. So. It is something that's out there. I think it's the next big thing to break this game open. I'm really just hoping that somebody finds it soon. I know that we've It'd be tested nice. it for years, but it would be really, really cool. It'd be nice. <laughs> Got to be careful on the house here. Um, yes, yeah, did miss that note there, but was able to recover. Um, you know, falling off the roof here is a, is a big time loss. Yeah, you gotta go all the way. There's only one spring pad to get on top of the house, and it's kind of in an awkward position. So if you fall off the back of the house, you gotta walk all the way around to the front of the house, and then spring up, and then go all the way to the back of the house on the upper level. So, kind of annoying. 
Now this is interesting inside Napper's room. This fire actually doesn't spawn immediately, so you can, as long as you're walking through it as soon as you can, you won't take damage from the fire. Let's see if he gets this skip here. Oh, he got it. Nice job, Siv. Nice. Uh, so, you know, again with flying and swimming being able to skip jiggy animations, uh, the the flight animation actually starts as soon as you take off from the pad. Uh, so if you position yourself just right there and turn your body towards the jiggy as you take off, you can skip that dance. Uh, but the, posi the positioning is really precise for it, so trying to use a little bit of a setup and be able to get it. Alright, so uh, Helthos has actually picked up a pretty significant chunk of time here on King. Only about one room behind him when they were about half a level behind him and Hag. Hag's still not entering MMM yet, but again, still not out of this race. Stiv missing the hive jump. Gets it second try though. If you wanna do you wanna kinda talk about the routing in this level as well, Brad, why hive jump is really important? Yeah, so otherwise if you didn't uh, do that hive jump, you'd have to actually exit the maze. Um, so it makes more of a convenient route. You can kind of stick to the outer edge of the level here and go straight over to the graveyard. Um, where right now he did some really solid movement and egg uh, poops there to get into the pots without having to uh, deal with those gravestones too much. So that that's a that's a really tricky section there, and he did it really well. Yeah, I know. Before we had hedge jump, we had we had it to where you had to enter and exit the maze, and it just kind of got annoying. Um, it's because just, it's just awkward, you know. Yeah, you can't. You can't. The thing is, is that the gates in MMM that close off passages, they only can be opened from one side, because the lock can only be ratatat ratted from you know whatever side the lock is on, and so you can't actually exit the hedge maze into the graveyard from the hedge maze's side. So it's really important that uh, we're able to kind of jump over. King having a little trouble with the first pot here. Oh, did we actually miss that? According to Dick, Dick said that Helthos teleported the door. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a, that's a really funny little thing that we, we recently discovered. So, um, if you poop a couple eggs before you do that, that uh, jiggy skip that we were talking about in Napper, it, it kind of messes with some of the objects in the room. And I know Mittens knows a little bit more about why exactly it happens, um, but the objects get a little shifted around, and the door actually teleports to the center of the room. The door, you know, literally the door exiting the room. So <laughs> it actually saves a really small amount of time to do that because then you don't have to get back and talent trial later. But <laughs> it's just it, it almost it just looks funny more than anything. I think it's funny because like the door is like sideways on the flight pad. It just looks like so weird. It's hard to commentate on four people. I've never done this before, but it's really fun that you do miss uh, some, you know, some things that happen here. Stiv entering the church. Uh, this is kind of another slower section of MMM, just oh. kind of optimizing grabbing notes and stuff like that. Whereas, yeah, look, I mean, uh, Helfos is definitely caught up significantly on King here. Yeah, King really cut it close there. Almost got hit by the uh, by the purple ghost. Um, you know, making it hard for you to get these letters in the order as he circles around the room. Oh yeah, they bring up a good point in chat, Brad. If if OOT gets sub four and Banjo gets sub two in the same year. Well, yeah, OOT a sub four is basically like you know realistically confirmed now, and for BK, you know, Stib some of the best is like. It's a 159.03, I think. It's like really low. Or, two or something, so like, you know, a little bit of, of extra stuff found. And you can Just one it. good run. <laughs> so something we missed, um, this level has a lot going on, is King just did the uh, the Jinjo skip, kind of like we saw in uh, Mumbo's Mountain. Uh, but it's a little bit harder here because that Jiggy doesn't fly up in the air. So the jump timing is a little bit uh, trickier, but he was able to get it and then sneak in that token hiding under the whip crack in the um, in the pool there. Yeah, normally if you wanted to get that token, you would have to either shoot the whip crack with eggs or gold feather it. But if you kind of get it during that animation sequence, you can just kind of jump on top of it while you're grabbing the jiggy. 
and get it for free. So, and it looks it's... like Helfo's, uh, like before I said he missed that token, he ended up detouring for that one in the corner over there. Uh, and then he missed that skip, had to go back up there. But he, he's okay, you just gotta be careful in the church when it, with these, you know, being at two health. Alright, so. Yeah, Stiv is. Yeah, Stiv's in the lead. Stiv's in the lead with King right behind him. Helfo's now entering the church, and Hag's still a very solid place in fourth. Um, still not still not even too far behind Helfos. Now the Helfos had a detour for that token. Just about 30 seconds or so behind, so. Hag getting trolled by the limbo. He got he got a spring jump canceled because limbo was touching him. Oh my god. But does get the Jinjo skip, which is good. Gets the token and the Jiggy. Stiv now jumping off the top of the church. And Stiv's going to be making his way into Mumbo's again for the second transformation, turning into the, um, the pumpkin. Low health here is also intentional. Uh, Death Warp at the end of this level will be used uh, as well. Stiv gets wishy-washy. <laughs> 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 so uh there are two um possible transformations um that could happen instead of getting transformed the normal way you can either get wishy-washy and you know that wishy-washy is going to happen because uh mumbo doesn't take away your tokens just yet um and that is where mumbo obviously turns you into the washing machine which he doesn't let you like walk around in he's just kind of like oops my mistake the other um, transformation that's possible is what's known as the T-Rex. And you know if the T-Rex is going to happen because Mumbo actually talks to you before he transforms you. Um, but it's something like a... What's even the chances of T-Rex, Brad? It's something like I, 0.03 or something. I, I don't know what the chance of T-Rex It's like a really... like I think Wishy Washy is like 3% chance. And I think like T-Rex is 0.03. It's something like really ridiculously low. So you almost never see T-Rexes. Both of them obviously lose, you know, the amount of time that it takes to transform into the actual transformation you want. So it's completely RNG. You don't want it, but. Ooh, okay. Hellfoes is good. He, he just said, keep it safe. Kill that ghost. Don't risk dying. Yeah. So everybody out of the church now, besides Hag, he'll be making his way. Stiv making his way over to the well, which is where he will finish MMM. And actually, MMM, we've got uh, Gobi's Valley. Otherwise known as um, the place where dreams go to die. And I guess they're all going to be going for that really, really tricky Gobi's route, right? Yeah, I, I imagine all four of them will be using it. Um, this is a, a cool route that uh, that Dick Ascon helped create, where uh, you actually you almost risk dying at the very beginning of the level. Um, not that you already don't, but <laughs> you you actually will skip using the waiting boots to get the notes in the sand. So that's a that's a really cool route that you guys will be able to see. Hag at one health here, plays it safe. Gold feathers the ghost before even flat flipping onto the pew. Very smart decision. He knows he's behind, so good on him to play it safe like that. And according to Thunderful, uh, Helfos is still down a token. Oh, so he had to go, yeah, he had to go over there and get that one in the hedge um, early. So he's gonna also have to detour for another token later on. Uh, I'm not sure which one he's gonna go for. Maybe, I can't even think of a good one right now, but. Maybe you there, get that there, extra... There's more backups later on. You could get that room, extra so. one in winter, I guess. That one's, like, really out of the way, though, with this route. Yeah. Or I guess he could maybe get... You guys already get the one behind Mumbo's hut and the one behind Mumbo's chair. In bubble gloop? No, I yeah. think they skipped the one behind the hut, so they could get oh, that okay. one. He could get that one. Right. All right, so Stiv resetting after the water uh, level rises. Um, this is actually something that we 
have done for a while now. We found out that it was faster instead of keeping the game as complete single segment. Uh, it works better if you go ahead and reset there, reload the cartridge, and then start from the beginning. Uh, it works because we come back into the lair in order to pick up the Clanker's Cavern Witch switch jiggy. Um, so we save a little bit of time there and then we roll back into the cauldron. Well, no, that's um, for the other route. The 450 skip route ends up being faster to just not use that cauldron. Oh, nice. So you just so, go straight into the yeah, go. It's, it's, it's based on if you use a 450 skip route or not. Nice. Okay. But yeah, you, w you would if you didn't do that, that, you know, 10 second time save route. Okay, so Helfos went ahead and got the extra token in the sink. Oh, yeah. So that's the one that he go ahead and went in. Not too bad. The sink is uh, one that I use. King, we're losing signal on King's stream. Hopefully, everything is okay on his end. Oh, it's just because of the... It's the hammer wreck. Okay. Yeah, it's I was, like, wondering what was happening. Um, so, right. you'll see Stiv there using gold feathers. Um, that's because he wants to be at full health here instead of taking that damage in the sand. Okay, so he's going to grab the running shoes here. Skipping all these notes for later, and he's going to go over here to grab these in running shoes and in talon trot. And this is for the kind of that advanced Gobi clip that we were talking about earlier. We used to not clip into Jinxie with talon trot, but we found out that it was actually a little more, I don't know if consistent is the right word, but it's definitely more doable. And there goes still getting the first try. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that they, after, you know, practicing it quite a bit, the top runners have found that it is a little bit more consistent than the uh, the beak barge method. Uh, All right. So, uh, Hack picking up significant time on Helfos here. Not not even too far behind. Helfos just now detransforming in the shed, and Hag will be right behind him. So, yeah, again, like we said, anything can happen in this game. Elfos, even something as simple as missing a token, has dropped him down into uh, only a significant enough lead over Hag. So, Stiv in Gobies, King on his way to Gobies, the other two boys getting to reset, and they'll be heading that way as well. Stiv doing a good job with the, the movement and the egg shots and Jinxie. Um, now, a little thing about these rings over here is that uh, they don't actually rise up out of the ground until they're on camera, so that's why you see it rising up there. Normally, it would just be, you know, up in its upright position. Uh, so he's using some camera manipulation there to get the ring to spawn. Otherwise, you can make the jump onto it, but it's a little bit harder um, without the speed shoes on. Yeah, the jump is always really annoying to do without the speed shoes. You have to kind of, like, angle yourself at the nose because the nose is actually a little bit lower than it appears to be, but it's just kind of, it's a lot better. When you can oh, it. King's got kind of a weird angle here. Hopefully this works for him. Oh uh, no, he misses it. Yeah, so he, he's out of, he's out of, he only had two tries for that uh, trick uh, with this route. So unfortunately he missed it. He's gonna have to shoot eggs into the nose and lose like, you know, 25 seconds or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think it is something like 20. Gets it though, gets both the shots. Now you'll see he's this this hand is gonna be near him, but uh Okay, he gets out of the way in time. He <laughs> <laughs> getting the town shot immediately there, that was a little sketch. Yeah, so uh, sorry, we had a uh, question about say, the Huh? No, no, go ahead. What did you reset? I was just gonna say if the hand is like sometimes it can be right on top of you. And then like you think you're gonna get hit, but actually he doesn't hit you right away. But uh, what was the question? Well, people were asking why we use the third uh, save file instead of the second one. Um, there's actually, when you start the game, there's actually less lag in during the animation for starting the game on both, or, or on, on the third file than there is on the second. So it's something that's very insignificant in terms of like the, you know, duration of a full run. But obviously we're speedrunners, we want to go as fast as possible, so. Mostly everybody I know uses the third file. Okay, so now let's see how Hellfoes does. One more try. 
All right, gets it. got it. Nice. And Pack's coming up on a two. Again, not too far behind Helfos. Picked up some time. Pack's also got a, a really weird angle here. Hopefully he gets it. Misses the first one. Gets it on the second. Nice. Right, cool. So three out of four made it. Still a hard trick, so, you know, good job for the guys who made it. Fortunate for King, but he's still, you know, keeping good pace here. And King is still in second place pretty significantly, too, so. Still good on him for maintaining a good early game. So for those of you guys who are just joining in with us, uh, Stivity Bubba, who is in the top left, he is winning. King KC, bottom right, is uh, currently in second. And then Helfo's bottom left is in third, and Haganator, which is top right, is in fourth. Um, but it's still a very close race. Still a lot of levels left to go, so don't go anywhere. Anything can happen. Stiv coming up on some tricky beef bombs here now. He's going to go for this uh, honeycomb in the cactus, and then beef bomb this rock that goes uh, chaining down Gobi. And what he wants here is he wants to not land, but he's really low on the ground, so this hopefully he doesn't land here. Okay. Wow, he's actually good. manages to get out. Yeah. So um, going for the really tricky water pyramid clip here now. Woo! Alright, he gets got it. it. So beak bombs in this game have a really weird um, you know, mechanic to them. And that you you kind of lunge forward a little bit right away. You you just kind of like jolt forward, and it's not really your speed. It's kind of just like your, your your positioning. And sometimes with the right angle, you can actually clip through um, corners like that. And so he used like a flap setup to get his positioning just right so that he can clip and then enter the loading zone and that saves him from having to hit the switch and watch the little cutscene of the door opening and everything and then using the camera manipulation again here to get this ring so very nicely done yeah and he'll be entering uh king sandy butts pyramid here um, you know, a little, little tougher section for the casual players having to go through the maze, but Stiv is just going to kind of do a nice little trick. He's going to jump up on top of this wall and just walk on top of the maze. Nice. I always really like this section. Kind of breaks it Not open. I'm sure what happened with uh, uh, his matching game there, I, but at Helfo has ended up with a 57. Usually how these guys get like 67, 68. So I'm not sure what happened there. I missed it. Maybe he had some trouble with the mum mum. Maybe. See Hag picking up a 68 there. Yeah, so Hag caught up quite a bit. Probably like 10 seconds there. Stiv going for the quick dive into the moat. Doesn't take damage, which is good. Yeah, uh, the game still thinks that the sand is down there. Uh, if you're in the walking animation, you'll still take damage. So if you quick dive all the way down, you'll take damage. And uh, he just barely wasn't all the way down. And then King uh, managing to not land on the Gobi uh, Jiggy as well. And now he's going to go for the beak bomb. We'll see if he gets it. A little bit of a weird angle, but... Oh, oh he... clips all the way through. Misses so the door. He, he missed the loading zone. And now uh, he's going to have to go for the switch normally. So he's going to have to change his route up a little bit here. That's really unfortunate for him. Um, Stiv wanting some extra health from that Slappa there instead of detouring all the way for that Beehive. Although that puts him down a gold feather, so not sure how that's going to affect him later. Oh my god, Hag just finishing rubies with his last eggs. Oh, that's a really bad place to be low because there's no eggs in here. You have to leave and come back. So, Hag really cutting it close with his resources on this race, with the feathers and, and the FP and then his eggs there. Alright, so Stiv going for the final flying section here of Go Beast. He's going to be trying to collect the Grabba Jiggy in flight with the Beak Bomb. Gets it perfectly. It was great. 
Just because of how fast you move as a beak with a beak bomb, uh, sometimes you actually end up like kind of just colliding with things before hitting the object. So thankfully that didn't happen there. Sometimes you can crash land on on Grabba like that. Oh man! Hello, folks. Is that one health here on Gobies? So he is either gonna have to take the carpet, or he's gonna have to use gold feathers. Oh, he thought his camera was turned the other way. Oh man. This is this is really. All right, he's going for the gold feathers. This is why Gobies is a hard still, level. But... Still gotta be careful here with Slappa. Gotta make sure that you don't. Don't touch him on the way up to the pyramid. And even once you get inside the pyramid, you can't touch the mum mums. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on Helfos here. He's gonna have to be pretty safe at the moment. Had Bagging also lane. missing the flight section, yeah. Yeah. Alright, Stiv finishes Stiv gets the level. The death work. It's good. Really clean for, for Stiv for the most part. That was pretty good, and still will be making his way over to uh, Rusty Bucket Bay now. Obviously seen by players as one of the more difficult levels um, because of the engine room. However, once you get out of engine room, it turns very much into another MMM, where you just got to go through those really small rooms as fast as possible over and over and over again. So Helfo's playing it safe here. <laughs> Making sure to really go around these mummies. <laughs> Not picking up any extra health. He's going to definitely uh, get that beehive right next to Gobi at the start of the level. He'll need that. Yeah, well, he's got to go into uh, Sandy Butts first. Um, so let's hope he doesn't please, touch the fire. Please don't jump into the fire in, inside the maze. <laughs> oh, and here's something we've missed, Brad. King actually uh, has to get this jump onto the Jinxie without the speed shoes. I think he missed the fifth one. Oh, yeah. There you go. He finally gets it. All right, and now he's making his way down. So I guess he he just struggled getting it coming out of... He missed one somewhere. Maybe he missed it coming out of Jinxie. So Helfo's being careful here. Not jumping against the sides. I thought that was part of the, the route they do. The, the ring is a little bit differently. Cause then they have to do uh, one without the angle. They have to do, yeah. They they do. They they have their own little like camera set up here. So Hag despite despite Hag being low on resources, he is really really close to Helfos. Because of oh, uh, the gold feather okay. section. Helfos. Oh my God, I can't even believe you went for the quick dive. Crazy runners, crazy crazy. All right, well, if you guys are just joining us, we want to remind you that uh, we are accepting donations for twitch.tv slash speedrun. Um, we've got some great incentive raffle prizes out there for you. If you donate $5, you'll have a chance for a Celeste Steam code. $10 gets you a chance at a Beast Coast backpack. $15 for a Beast Coast zip-up hoodie. Really nice, really comfy. $20 for a Beast Coast team jersey. And $25 for a Super Mario 64, Nintendo 64 bundle, which includes the cartridge, the console, and a controller, all signed by the Cheese 05. So get oh, in, God. get in your donations. That was so close. King <laughs> almost fell down. And there is sand down there, so he would have died. Uh, he gets the honeycomb, gets 100 notes, okay. ends it. Woo! Yeah, Gobies, what did I say? What did I say? Gobies? Gobies is where dreams go to die. It is where dreams go to die. Yeah, okay, so... He, he had to get that ring, so that's part Stiv of Stiv is in the engine room. Gets the right. recoil. Very nice. There's a little bit of uh, invulnerability after you get hit, so if Stiv's using that to get through these fans, um, normally you would have to slow them down uh, by going actually to the other entrance to engine room before coming here. Yeah, um, you got double tap that quite time. A bit of time. Yeah, that's you made it double, work. Kidding, double tap is scary. All right, so uh, he's not gonna go back to the wow instant clip out instant. through the glass window. <laughs> that was really good. Oh no, no and had to miss the beak bomb to grab her. He's gonna have to so, go grab the speed shoes. What I said earlier exactly just happened is Hag 
just had kind of just like the wrong angle and it ended up with him crash landing before getting uh you know getting that jiggy so he's gonna have to get the shoes and watch the dance and everything oh that's so frustrating Alpha is doing good, grabbing all that stuff as well. And once the uh, little thing about Rusty Bucket Bay is uh, the air in Rusty Bucket Bay and the oil is uh, health, so you only have half the time before you drown, and you can't surface. You actually lose air on the surface as well, so you got to be careful. You're drowning really fast, but still making it over there. And okay. Hag using, again, some slope abuse along with Stiv here as well uh, to get across those ledges, and that's a really tight one in Gobi's Valley there, but Hag was able to make it work. Finally, they all made it out of Gobi's. The dream King dream now, Henry, RBB. <laughs> yeah. Hag lo lost some time there to Hellfoes, but still not too far behind. Still anything could happen. <laughs> <laughs> Click on wood coming. <laughs> Stiv! He did I the ground pound. Yeah, no, he did. No, no he did. I think I think what happened is he was get trying to get onto the ledge, and he like he pressed Z before the flutter actually got him on the ledge. So he just, oh, so he just ground pounded all, all the way, way down. down. <laughs> so he's got to be really careful now because uh, something that he likes to uh, you know, go for in this room is the damage cancel on this jiggy. But he's at three health now, so he's probably gonna take it safe here if he's anything but smart. Okay. Yeah, he's just go. going for the gold feather. Okay. He knows. He knows. All right. So King going through engine room here now. Got to be careful of that sailor, but thankfully he's not really in the way here. Yeah. Interesting thing with engine room. So most people just assume if you, you know, if you fall all the way down to the bottom here, you can die. But um, you can actually, if you get hit off at a certain angle, you can actually flutter over to a pipe and walk out of bounds, which will void you out instead of killing you. So you won't have to collect all the notes again. You'll still have to go back in here to like get the jiggy and obviously like turn the propellers off, but saves a little bit of time if you're able to do that. Yeah, voiding out in this game, uh, the developers were actually really nice and decided that if you were to break their game that you shouldn't be punished for it. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so they, they, you know, if you void out a bounds, it actually doesn't take away your notes and Jinjos. So it's actually going to be used later on in, in a route um, in Click Clock Wood. Um, but, you know, similar application there is you have to only redo a little bit of the level as opposed to the whole thing. So Stiv going through the Chompa room, making sure to maintain that top speed so that he can just kind of slide underneath the Chompas. A little bit of tricky movement there. Going to do a slope reset to... Oh, he tries to stay on Tantra and unfortunately misses it. Yeah, those are really tricky. Right there. Oh, oh my god! Elfos. <laughs> Elfos came going really insane. close to falling there, but saved it with that quick reflex there with the Ratatat wrap. Um, Gets the double tap, but survives. Yeah. All right, Stiv's going to be going for lifeboat jump now. Tight, tight. Ooh, See, I yeah, wasn't sure I, about that one. It looked like he jumped a little early. He did, and just uh, he lost like 20-something seconds because of that now. Yeah. So lifeboat jump, it saves time. You don't have to climb all the way up the ladder and across to get onto the boat. You kind of just barely get that jump onto the, onto the uh, ship. But again, it can be really tricky. You have to jump at the exact right point. You have to get that max height and distance jump. So he's not going for it this time. He said once is enough for me. He's gonna go ahead and climb and go over. Yeah. I don't blame him. Double taps though. These double taps in engine room are really getting everybody in this race. And he falls on top of the box. He's got to get underneath it. And no, he, he gets he's, it. He's, he's fine. Okay. <laughs> Is that two health going to be going into the kitchen? So he's going to have to play it a little safe in here because he's going to have to jump in that oven. So probably going to end up... Maybe he's going to not play it safe. Maybe he's just going to go down to the one health. Oh, he's yep. using gold feathers. 
Oh my god. Yeah, ground pound the goblin. <laughs> Some interesting race strats here coming out from our runners. But that one whatever mistake, works that for one you. Silly weird mistake earlier just, you know, kind of screws up the Had him trying to go for a weird quick dive there. No, he went for the mid-air jump. Oh, really? I like saw them doing this before the race started. They were trying to mess around with trying to mid-air jump over there. Onto the grate? Yeah. Wow. Alright, so... Stiv lost some time, but still has a pretty significant lead over King, who is still in second. Elfo's coming in third, Hagen fourth currently. Really the first big mistake for Stiv this race. And he's doing some camera manipulation here because it gets a little bit laggy up on these smokestacks. So he's keeping the camera zoomed in and facing certain angles to yeah, the, that lag. The draw distance for RBB is kind of different than other levels in that it really does like show the whole level at once. So you really want to kind of zoom in your camera and make sure that uh, you're not like seeing the other yeah. smokestacks, seeing all the blue boxes and stuff like that. Dire, dire doc. Um, in Super Mario 64. Yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody should get that reference, right? I hope so. This is a Mario stream! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Hag climbing up the first crane now, gonna be making his way into oh, Boss Boom Box. Okay. So something about this room that Stiv is in right here is, Oh, the nav uh, room! The this pop. room has a notorious tendency to crash the game when you get hit by those sailors. So thankfully it didn't just happen to Stiv, because uh, he got hit there. Hag looking like he's going to go for the damage cancel. Doesn't get it, so he'll be down to three health after Boombox here. And getting Actually, knocked back the other yeah, way. Yeah, pushed back the other way. Okay, Helfo's coming up to the Chompa room with only two health. We're going to see yeah, what he does but, here. He's going he's gonna to get the beehive, I bet. He's going to... He wants the health, doesn't he? No. Uh, he's going for it. Oh, okay. Oh he went ahead and rotted that, rotted that. Woo! Oh that was scary as hell. Yeah, because sometimes I... if you're like right up against the wall there, um, the rat tap just doesn't work. So he's lucky that it works there. All right, King making his way out of the captain's room. Lifeboat jump over to the smokestack. Stiv freeing Snorkel right now. Cutting that dolphin in half while also yeah. saving him. The anchor just kind of like goes right through the dolphin, but he still and, survives. And Hag's at Hag one going down to one health. Using some gold feathers here, killing the, the goblin. This is the most casual race I've ever seen because every time they get to low health, they just go go for the invulnerability strat. Helpo's going for lifeboat jump, gets it. All right. Nice. He was a little low on that lifeboat when he jumped over, so thankfully he made it over the railing, because if you're a little bit too low in the lifeboat, you won't make it over. Oh no, um, Hag gets hit by the Chompa. He's gonna go ahead and get the bees. Yeah, there we go. Good, good, good. Oh my gosh, the, the bees chased you for a long time. Holy God. All right, so Stiv, I think he got the dance cancel. I missed it, but we didn't talk about that one. It's a little bit yeah. different than the dance cancel in MMM. Yeah, so uh, when you jump out of the water, the game actually doesn't register that you're on land until you touch land or you do another uh, move like Flutter or rat -a Rap. So if you are able to jump onto a Jiggy without touching the ground, you can actually skip it because the game just still thinks you're in the water. Uh, so you use the uh, buoyancy of that platform that the Jinjo is on at its lowest point uh, then the game doesn't think you're on land. You can skip that dance, and it's the ten dance, so it's the long one. Yeah. You really want to skip that one. Had going for lifeboat jump gets it as well. Good, good. So all of our runners besides Stiv getting it first try. King making his way, deciding not to go for the damage boost. Probably wants to. I didn't see. I can't remember his health. I don't know. Probably wants to maintain a, a maintain healthy, high health for anchor room with yeah. the long hallway of the Champa enemies. All right, so Stiv will be making his way all the way through the lair again to Click Clock Wood, um, the longest level of the game because of the four seasons that you have to do. 
But uh, I really like our Click Lock Wood route with all the clips and stuff like that. Oh, it makes it really interesting. He was, he was at three health. He's at one health now. One health with still one note to go. He's making sure that they die. <laughs> he doesn't want it. He doesn't want any trouble. Okay. So, smart on him. Smart on him. And Stiv making leaf jump there. Um, that jump is pretty tricky, that backflip there. Uh, you got to kind of mash A when you get stuck on that leaf in order to get up. Uh, he manages to get it. Yeah, so we're gonna time. we're gonna have some pretty interesting quick lock woods here, Brad, because I think I think only Helfos and maybe not even Helfos, but I think the rest of these guys have like three gold feathers or less, and they got to do Zebas. Yeah, um, I don't know if they what their what their idea is to prepare for that. You need five for Zebas. Is I that think right? you need, I think you need four, so maybe you can do it with the three down to zero. I think you I think you might have enough time. Maybe. But but they will have to do flibbits right after. Yeah, and uh, as well as the snare bears and falls, so they gotta be real careful with their gold feather management. Now there is one underneath the bridge uh, leading up to spring in the lobby, so there's one they can get really fast. Um, they're probably gonna go for this gold feather that's in the lifeboat at the end of Rusty Bucket Bay before they die. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit, you know, you can't really tell if you're you going to get it or not. You could try to ground pound on it. Yeah, it's hard to do. Um, something to go for, at least. All right, so Hag getting the jiggy there. Yeah, he being, went for it, but he's not able to grab it. it. Yeah. And, you know, earlier in the run, uh, we activated that cauldron to get back. Uh, that helps us get back to Click Clock Wood faster when you got to open the level here. And Stiv going for the second Brentilda goes for two answers. Uh, hopefully, he's got his pattern all figured out for Furnace Fun. So he's entering Click Clock Wood now. Click Clock Wood uh, probably. In my opinion, the most difficult level. Um, there's a lot of things in Click Rock Wood that can kind of screw you in all in all the seasons, really. Um, you got soft lock in spring. You've got all the snare bears and stuff in fall. The acorns. You've got the clips in winter. So we'll have we'll see very interesting stuff here. Helfo's also missing the gold feather there at the end, but making his way out. So yeah, Stiv's still in a pretty sizable lead. King right behind him, and Helfos and Hag trailing. Hag gets the good recoil there. Um, let me see. So the other thing too is that uh, with Click Clock Wood, again, we do have to go into all these seasons, and unfortunately, with the way that the route works. You have to go from spring to summer to autumn to winter. Um, you're not able to do those seasons in any other order because you open up one season by going to the um, previous season. So we don't really get a lot of routing options. We can only kind of adjust things as we see fit throughout that order. Um, so, you know, they'll be doing their best to optimize the route in that way. So Hag actually gets the ground pound, falls into the water, so he'll have a little bit longer of a death warp because of the drowning animation, but he'll still be making his way out. All players still without deaths, without unintended deaths, so that's good. So they're still not too far away. All right, now Stiv is gonna do something here where he frees the bees. The bees are gonna attack him during this cutscene, which gives him access to moving Banjo while the cutscene is playing, which is really good. And then. Using some high velocity here while falling, he's just going to clip right through the level and go straight into summer. Free the bees. King going ahead and talking to Brentilda as well to get his pattern. Go ahead. He waits for all three answers. All right, so now Stiv is in summer. He's going to have to be collecting five worms for the eagle, for Irie. 
to feed him and help him get nice and big since his mama abandoned him. Type F in the chat for Irie's mom, never to be seen again. Um, and we've got Hellfoes and Hag making their way back into the Quick Walk Wood lobby. Or I guess Hag still has to open up Quick Walk Wood. Okay, I'm back. Oh, welcome back. All right, so Stiv ended up with Zubba's. He has one gold feather after Zubba's. So he's gonna have to pick up an extra one somewhere. Okay. For those snare bears. Yeah. You can do each of them with one gold feather. It's hard. So King jumping his way around the birds now, actually faster than killing the birds. You get to stay in the talent try. You don't have to, you know, keep up your movement. Killing the birds actually gives you a little animation too, a little cutscene of the bird dying too. So if you can avoid killing any, then that, that's really nice. So, still opening up autumn here. Almost said summer. He's in summer. <laughs> Helfos has now made his way into spring, and Hag still trailing. He jumps his way around the birds. King will be making his way up to free Irie. Yeah, so the thing that's really interesting, I think, about Quick Rock Wood is um, I know that Naughty, when you like open up his house, he says like, oh, come on up, I'll give you a Jiggy. Well, that Jiggy is there in, in fall and winter, which are the two ways that you can get back into his house. Um, but if you actually were to be able to go up there in summer, uh, his house actually doesn't exist. The game, the programmers didn't put it in the game. So it's just like nothing up there. Yeah, same thing with spring. Um, you can actually open up that boulder uh, by pooping eggs onto it and then it just won't, you can swim up and it won't even be, his house just isn't there, it just ends. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Just like a tunnel. You guys can try it out. So King going for the spring clip here now. This is actually a, a hard clip to do, but he got it there. Stiv going for the summer house jump gets it. I know he's been, he's been, he's lost a few runs to that pretty recently. So he had no hesitation with that one. Good on him. Jumping on the back half of the snare bear there, which doesn't actually detect your hitbox. Or is it that it doesn't detect your hitbox or is it that it doesn't have a hitbox on the back? I guess it would detect your hitbox because you can jump off of it. So maybe the back half just doesn't damage you. So Stiff coming up here to feed Irie. He's got his 25 tokens, so he's ready to turn into the B towards the end of Click Clock Wood. And again, like we said, the B, the B is very, um, very necessary in this route because all four of these runners are going to be doing rba which for those who um haven't heard of it yet that is reverse b adventure so they're going to actually be using the bumblebee to clip out of the click clock wood lobby and they're going to be taking the b throughout gruntilda's lair and using the b to enter bubble glue swamp without opening it up so it's a really really interesting uh route yeah, we took RBA from OOT. You know, they've got reverse bottle adventure. So we were memers and we created reverse B adventures. So, yeah. All right, so let's see. Um, Stiv entering autumn. Stiv entering autumn, yeah. And I, I could. Ten worms I, I wanted to see, I, I missed it, but I wanted to see how many gold feathers Helfos had after Zubba. But I missed it too, yeah. All right, Hag getting the uh, damage during the cutscene so he can move over to the clip spot and sets up his camera. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, yeah. That's All right, good. first try. Nice job. So in autumn, we have to find 10 worms to feed Irie, so that's why we do all the bottom stuff first, and then we kind of go up the tree then before we come back down again. 
there could be some potentially faster routes uh, for the for the level, but you got these worms kind of dictated a little bit. Yeah, it's unfortunate. So King doing the uh, jumps up onto the leaf ends up saving it with the Ratatat Rat. Still doing a quick dive to enter Naughties. So everybody in summer, but Stiv, he's about a season ahead. We're going to see how many gold feathers Hag has. Oh, Hag actually has a decent amount. He's got enough for the yeah, snare bears and everything. Good. So Stiv opting to get the Jiggy in winter, um, which will, you know, play a big part later, actually, uh, with a flight section. We'll get to that in a little while. Yeah, I actually don't know. I know Stiv found RBA for the NTSC version, but the old RBA for PAL version is a really really old trick we've known about it for a while yeah that allows you to get out of bounds in the, one of the up, upper corners of the room you could do rba with ntsc um without you know the method that we do now however it's significantly harder and it's actually slower um, because it requires you to leave the cauldron in the room unactivated and then you overlap the uh, cutscene of Mumbo trying to de-transform you with that cauldron and that allows you to get past the trigger because it's, it deloads the area before he's able to de-transform you. Yeah. Um, but that unfortunately is not uh, worth it because having to backtrack through the layer to open up the level. Yeah, really not uh, ideal, obviously. All right, so, uh, yeah, they're all making their way. And actually, it looks like Helfo's caught up significantly in Quick Walk Wood. He's just about a couple worms behind King. Yeah, he caught up quite a bit. Um, Hag making his way. Uh, finally, he's going to go up the tree now in summer. That was a hot little midair jump from King down yeah. to that yellow Jinjo. <laughs> Oh, the buzz bomb almost gets Stiv, but barely dodges it there. Yeah, that buzz bomb can be a real uh, SOB. He just kind of likes to hang out right there on the opening of that ramp. It's the only way to get to the top of the tree, and you have to go by him. So sometimes, you know, it depends on RNG where he is. Sometimes you just have to go ahead and uh, kill him. Stiv getting a couple of eggs there. Um, he's got to make sure he has enough because you actually got to do bubble gloop after this and you need some for the crocuses that you got to shoot eggs into. Oh, yeah, yeah, good point. So, uh... Risky jumps here for the acorns, but Stiv does it pretty fast. Yeah. Hag making summer jump. See if he gets it back. Yeah. Ooh, close, but makes it. So again, guys, if you're just joining us, we're we're in the back half of the BK run so far right now. All these runners with about uh, 30 to 35 more minutes left to go. Um, but if you haven't already, you want to get those donations in for those raffle prizes. You can win things like a Celeste Steam Code, a jersey, a sweatshirt, a bag, or you can win the Nintendo 64, Super Mario 64 bundle package where you can get a N64 console Super Mario 64 cartridge and a controller, all signed by uh, the Cheese 5 So that's a twenty-five-dollar donation minimum to get you into all of those raffles. So don't hesitate, donate now. All right, Stiv, feed an Irie in Autumn, and he uh, he changes his camera here because uh, Autumn gets really laggy, especially with this animation of the leaves falling in, in the level. So. Pointing the camera this way saves quite a bit of lag. Uh, and Helfo's also opting to get the Jiggy in winter in Naughties. Yeah, that's kind of like a player choice. Uh, really depends on what, how comfortable you are with that last flying section in winter. You can pick up the Jiggy in fall. It's really laggy, but then you don't have to pick it up during that flight uh, and risk landing and having to do ice clips. So really just depends on the player for that one. And, yeah, he opted not to do it, so. For the few minutes I was gone earlier, did you explain the, uh, the any of the flower stuff yet? Uh, I didn't explain the flower, no. I was explaining more of uh, RBA, just like the okay. fact that they have to okay. save the bee for the end. Yeah, so um, for those of you who might have noticed, uh, none of these guys uh, actually, so far, have hit uh, Gobi 
in um, in fall here. And the reason for that is because you can actually poop eggs into the flower for a second time if you re-enter spring. Um, however, what happens is the jiggy spawns in spring in the flower, which is supposed to spawn in fall. But because there's no goby in the area for, for him to go to that cutscene, uh, the game actually soft locked. So you're not able to move. But because of the bees um, over there, you can actually damage yourself and move during the cutscene. So that's something you'll have to look out for in spring soon. All right, Helfos and King getting to avoid the buzz bomb as they make their way over to the a uh, acorn section. Stiv going for whoo! That rat at that rat, but rat gets there. it on top, yeah. King actually goes for the YOLO jump across the hexagon platform there, and uh, we've seen Stiv lose a couple of solid runs to that jump before. So yeah, yeah, you can do it in both. Uh, you know, the the hexagon is only fully complete in autumn and winter, and you can choose to do it in both of those seasons. Some do, some don't. So uh, uh, King struggling to get on top of this shelf. He's gonna go ahead and go for the flat flip. Yeah, that's a really weird shelf there. You can wedge yourself up with Talon Trap, but you gotta kind of have a weird angle. Helfo's having a little bit of trouble with it too. Gets it though. Just to get it. Takes up some time. They're both going to be feeding acorns basically at the same time. Stiv going to go for the uh, jiggy grab on the Irie jiggy here, and he doesn't want to land. He wants to stay in flight again. You know, some TTC strats here. Yeah, this one's a little easier because the jiggy kind of bounces and it's really laggy, so it's kind of easy to tell exactly when you're going to grab it. Another jiggy skip here at the top of the level. And now he's going to go for the window. And he gets the flutter out of it. That's actually a really hard thing to do because the flutter is uh, pretty, uh, I don't know, I guess precise in terms of timing. Yeah, you only have a certain amount of time after Rattatat Ratting to kind of like spam that flutter and get it because you're going to lose height immediately after Rattatat Ratting. So uh, not a lot of runners do it, um, but we're starting to get more and more people doing it. They're getting that timing down. So Stiv yeah. going for the first winter clip now. Found by our boy Benja. Oh, that was so close to landing. Stays in flight. Amazing. Misses oh, the honeycomb, misses the honeycomb though. though. He's and got he's a double really back. Careful. He's only got three feathers. Okay, he barely has enough now. Wow. All right, he gets the second one. Nice. So now he's going to void out, and as I was saying earlier, uh, you don't actually lose any of your notes or jinjos, so... That ends up being a, a route uh, change that saved time there, as opposed to just leaving the level. Alright, so King and Helfo is actually really neck and neck here. King deciding to go for some extra red feathers, which is going to give Helfo a little bit more time to catch up. Real quick, we got $10 from Micho. Thanks, Micho. All right, so you want to kind of go through the soft locks now? Yeah, so now he's, he's, gonna, up poop, to it. Yeah, he's gonna poop eggs into this plant, which, you know, you wouldn't think it's gonna work because it's supposed to be done in autumn, um, but it actually... Oh. He missed, he missed the egg! Okay, that sucks. Um, the egg poop there is pretty precise and it just barely missed and bounced around, didn't go in. And now he's got to wait for the bees to kind of go back over to where they're, uh... Okay. He can move. Good. So he got hit right after, as the cutscene started. He can move. And now he's just going to be using sound and muscle memory to make his way over to Mumbo's hut without actually being able to see where he's going. Um, this takes quite a bit of practice um, and knowledge, but uh, with some setups and stuff you can make it over to that loading zone actually without even knowing where you're going. Yeah so and he good gets job in. Good job Stiff. He was really close to um, dying there because he got hit by those bees like 
frames after that cutscene started, and if it was any earlier, he would have uh, not been able to move, and then yep. these would have hit him again and killed him. So, right there, that almost could have been uh, the race changer, you know, but, uh, but he barely got it and kept going. All right, so Stiv is collecting the last Jinjo, which will give him the last Jiggy for Clip Clock, and then he'll be going for Hive Clip. Gets it really easily. That's actually a, a very, e very easy clip to get. Yeah. Pretty much just hold B as you fly into that corner. All right, so now we're going to see Stiv kind of executing what we know as RBA. So we're going to see him come up to this note door. He's going to stay on the top half of the door so that he doesn't activate it. And it'll allow him to push himself out of bounds and he can travel past the mumbo trigger into the lair. So now all those jiggies that he left, he's just gonna pick them up. He's going to pick them up with the B because you don't actually dance when you're the B. And it just saves a bunch of time in general. Um, the uh, Mad Monster and FP would switch jiggies. Those require you to be in flight as Banjo to get them, and is a big detour. But as you can see here, the Stiv's gonna just actually fly right into this wall, and it kind of clips in and gets it. So that's quite a bit faster. King misses the Jiggy. He's got to circle back. He's got to be really careful of his feathers here. Grabs it, though. Maintains his height for this honeycomb. Gets it. Good. And now we're going to watch uh, Hellfells go for the clip. Gets it. Uh, and he looks like he's at a good height. Gets the Jiggy. The honeycomb. Stiv getting the uh, sarcophagus jiggy there. That actually also saves quite a bit of time. Nice. Both of them getting both winter clips. Good, good, good. And bubble gloop as well. Uh, you can just walk right through those bars. And it's, the, the B is a little bit of a smaller hitbox. And the game thinks you got the, you know, jiggy so we in normal did, fashion. So we don't have bubble gloop gate. open, but you can kind of clip through the top of the door frame there. There's a little bit of space where you can push the B up against the top of the frame. So. Oh no. Hell Something happened to yeah, King. Sorry. King got hit there. Not not a big deal though. Not like falling off the tree or anything. Well, he is going to have to go back Elfos up there. Elfos has got to be careful. He's at two health here, so he's really got to make this work. Look at that. They're like neck and neck now. They're both jumping down to the ramp. <laughs> All right. We got the uh, double soft lock uh, strat here. Let's go. All right. Yeah. Hellfos does have to be careful here. It just two health. Misses the eight. Oh no, he gets him. No. He can't move. He can't move. He dies during soft lock. Oh no. Oh, Hellfos. No, not like this. All right. So Hellfos is going to have to go and collect all the Jinjos again. Unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because oh, that's man. one of the gin, you know, that's the G that we missed. So we got to do, he luckily had all 100 notes. So he's okay yeah. there. You know, he had all 100 notes, so it's not too bad. But he does have to go into summer to get the yellow Jinjo. He's got to go back into autumn, get the orange Jinjo. And he's got to go back into winter to get the blue Jinjo. So King is now going to take an easy second place here. And Hag's got the opportunity to catch up. So this is what we said, guys. You know, anything can happen in this game. You know, they're going for that risky strat, soft lock. It can be risky with those bees, and you've got to land those eggs. Exactly the thing that I was saying about to happen. I feel like I cursed it a little bit. Okay, Hag getting hit by the snowball, getting trolled a little bit by Sir Slush, trying to make this clip work still. Ends okay. up getting it. Good. Oh, lands on the on bed. Mm, okay. So Hag is going to have to be going for ice clip here. Um, again, not a hard clip, but sometimes runners can get trolled by this. This would be really, really bad if Hag fails this. Meanwhile, while all this chaos is going on, Stiv easily making his way through Bubble Gloop here. Um, you know, gotta have these few eggs here for the crocuses. He's gonna pick, he's gotta pick up a couple because he's got a few crocuses left. All right, Hag ends up getting Ice Clip pretty easily, so he's making his way into spring. He's now officially ahead of Hellfos. King's having some trouble with RBA here. Um, Almost activating the door. Oh. 
he might want to go back and just, like, go around. Yeah, um, he know. might want to clip out of here and set it up. Oh, I'm really worried he's going to trigger like the door, Brad. every time he does that, every time, it's scaring me, man. You know, if you go too low on this door, it'll open and then you're screwed. Like, he ha he would have okay. to go back and I open up Bubble Boo. Going around and setting it up the normal way again. No. <laughs> Okay, he's still having some difficulty. There he goes. He finally there gets go. it. There All we right. go. Good job, King. There you go. All right. So, you know, Stiv doing the hut jumps here in Bubble Gloop, skipping some of these shock spring pads to save some time. Hag now going for the soft block strat. Helfo's beak bombing over to the winter exit. <laughs> now, Hag's got to wait for the bees to get him. Uh, they hit him kind of late. So that might mess up his muscle memory a little bit here. So hopefully he can make this work. Yeah, usually you wait you wait to hear those audio cues. You know, you guys have been hearing it all all day. You've been hearing the roo, 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 roo. And when you hear him speeding up like that, you know you're going up the ramp, he finds it. Good job. All right, good. Nice hag. All right, so now Helfo's making his way over there now. Deciding to um, take the water the whole way instead of getting up on the ramp i don't know about that uh, choice but not sure what's going on he's got he's fine on health so yeah maybe he's just tilted okay now he's making his way over he's gonna be trying to do the soft lock hag missing the green jinjos got oh no div missed that yolo egg shot so now <gasps> he's gotta go for he's some gotta go find here. some eggs luckily there are some here in the corner i don't know if he knows that though looks like he's running away from him oh there he goes he's, yeah he found him go. okay good okay. All right, so he's going to have to come back over here for the Croctus. And what did I miss with Helfos? Oh, uh, he needed I, eggs. He, he, he needed, needed eggs. He needed, he needed some needed... eggs, yeah. Uh, King having a little bit of a trouble uh, with this B clip as well here. And, oh, almost clips back out of bounds, or in back in bounds, but man, just to get... Helfos misses loop. it. Gets it that time, though. The bees okay. hit him. Okay, he thankfully is at plenty of health this time, so he's totally fine. Now, Hag going for RBA. Hag also having a little also bit of trouble with this having clip. having a little bit of trouble. All right, you got it. He gets now, it, though. When you're doing RBA, you got to be really careful because you're already really close to the void. Helfo finds time. Mumbo's hut, so he's done the soft block. Very good on him. Good for him. You gotta be gotta be careful with the void there when you're doing RBA. Um, then you know that'll put you back at the entrance of Click Clock Wood, and then you gotta fly over and try again. And uh, the strat here in Bubble Gloop actually is to fly right over to Mumbo's hut and then just death warp because. Unfortunately, um, you know, this is not Xbox, we can't collect anything, and then uh, Death Warp back to the beginning of the level, save some time. So it ends up being faster to do that rather than to having to transform uh, an extra time in the level there and then walk the Croctus all the way back over yeah. to Mumbo when you're done with Vile. So that's our, that's our faster route here. So interesting thing we didn't talk about earlier is the Mad Monster Mansion, Jiggy, um, in the lair is behind that uh, glass eye of Grantilda's like kind of statue thing. And you can actually touch it with the bee's tit box from underneath the glass. Um, but there is a chance that you have to actually clip inside the glass as the bee. And that gets really annoying to try to clip back out of. So luckily all of our runners have not gone inside this yeah. run. Helfos uh, gets a really fast RBA there. Good for him. Stiv doing the tip tup choir, um, you know, requires some memorization or either or writing down the code. So Hag picked up a lot of time there on King. He's just gonna be flying to Mumbo's and yeah. detransforming, but King compared real, to real how far he was, that B stuff. Yeah. Still doing good though. All of our runners, all of our runners, still gonna be in the same level at the same time. Helfo's making his way through the B section. Looks like he wanted to grab that gold feather, but missed. Kind of, yeah. He's gonna be going for the eye jiggy now. And he's, he's kind of rushing it. 
Kind of a weird angle there. Yeah, I didn't think you really could see where he was going. All right, he's sending himself up again here. All right, All right good. Uh, grabs it. Nice. All right, Hag now restarting Bubble Gloop here. YOLO shot on the Croctus gets it! Yeah, there's actually a little bit of a camera set up there, um, because you can you can just space yourself correctly and then just shoot straight left and it'll work. I remember, I think Helpos was the one that came up with that that uh, idea originally, and some other people adopted it. That, that's the kind of nice thing about this game, is there's lots of little, little setups and tricks that uh, a lot of the top runners will find, and some of them just find that it works better for them. Um, you know, some of them may not actually be faster, but some of them may be more consistent. Yeah. So, sometimes it's worth it to go for those little things. Yeah, if you're just joining us now, Stiv is in the lead, King is in second, Hag is in third, and Helfos is in fourth. But they're all in Bubble Gloop Swamp, there's still any chance that anything could happen. And so we're gonna be seeing, uh, we're gonna be seeing them finish this level, and then they've just got Furnace Fun in the boss fight. This is really interesting because we've got, uh, you know, we've got Stiven first, but then we've got the, uh, we've got the second place, the slowest PB in second place here, yeah, and then Helfos with second best time in uh, last. So, you know, uh, for the majority of this race, Helfos was in was in third, now he's in last. Yeah, again, that soft lock and Cookock would really kind of screwing him over. Not having enough health, not landing those eggs, having to collect those Jinjos again. So now he's got a ton of health that he's got to deplete here before he can death warp, but not too bad. King kind of getting trolled by this buzz bomb right now, but manages to get the Croc to shot in. And Helfos is going to have to pick up some eggs as well. He's only got two eggs remaining with yeah. uh, four Croctuses left to feed, so... For Croctuses, Croctuses. Vile, uh, he doesn't need that token, because he's, he's done, he doesn't need tokens anymore. Um, and we're gonna kinda just let him do his thing for a few minutes, because just gotta beat Vile three times. Yeah, at this point, there's really nothing that, uh, Stiv could really lose at this point. I mean, you can lose to Vile, it doesn't happen too often, but... After this, he's just got Furnace Fun in the boss fight, so... He's pretty much got first place guaranteed at this point. Remember the last time you said that something was guaranteed in a race? Yeah, that was that was against you. Yeah. And then you <laughs> fell and died. <laughs> but you can't fall and die in Vile. No, but I, he can get hit or something. I Vile. guess he could always do the classic, you know, running off the edge of Grunty's tower. But I can't imagine that would lose him in first place. So something that we uh, didn't get to mention earlier with Stiv being so far ahead and so much going on is um, is similar to the damage in uh, Click Clock Wood from the bees letting you move during cutscenes. Uh, similarly, you can also do that by getting bounced off of something and then Tip Tup has this weird uh, property that when you touch him, you just kind of go wee and float, float, float backwards. So you can use that during this uh, cutscene to actually hit the turtles while they're sounding off. And that saves uh, some time because uh, if you're lucky with the RNG, you can actually complete the first pattern before it's even done. So, let's see, Helfo's finishing up Flibbits with zero gold feathers, so he had enough to finish off everything, that was good. Still finishing up here with Vile. Helfo's making his way to the hut jumps. Misses Miss the first one, kinda jumped a little bit early, he wasn't quite on the tippy top of the hut. A lot of people think that you need like a running start to do these hut jumps, and you really don't. You just have to jump from the exact center of the top of the uh, hut. You want that height advantage. So, and this hut right here is actually gonna have to destroy it. Um, you don't have to. You can do a really precise jump, but it's just really difficult. RTA, not worth it. Not even Stiv goes for it. Yeah, it's a really really tight hut jump. All right, Hellfells will make his way over here for the practice. And now you can see King, he's intentionally taken a bunch of damage here um, because 
Unfortunately, with the way the routing works in this level now, and it being the last level in the oh, game. Oh no! So uh, Hag, uh, Hag accidentally, yeah, Hag accidentally reset Tip Tuck there, oh, no. and so he's got to go actually and talk to him again to ask for the code again. Yeah. He... Um. Sometimes what happens is the first code of Tip Tuck is three turtles, but if you accidentally reset him, he'll actually like kind of do it twice or like once and a half times. And it kind of screws up the pattern of like what you're supposed to hit first. Yeah, it, it it's just like, kind of like a visual bug almost. Yeah. Um, but what I was saying with King is because of the routing in this level, uh, you actually refill your health on that last honey comb that you collect. And because there's a death warp at the end of this level, you gotta take a bunch of damage heading over to uh, Mumbo's for doing Vile. So that's why he was just going right through the uh, swamp there. And unfortunately, there's no really nowhere in the level to take like a bunch of fall damage to take like a bunch of it all at once. So uh, Stiv's done with uh, Bubble Gloop here and making his way over to Furnace Fun. Yeah, he's just almost done now, so he's just got to do Furnace Fun. There isn't really anything too difficult once you have your Gruntilda pattern um, besides Furnace Fun skip. And as long as you nail that, you know, you're pretty much good to go for the run. got $25 from Witches. Hopefully I nice. said that right. Get those donations in, fam. Now Witches gets uh, gets in for all the raffle prizes. So. Whoa! We got a Trihex raid of 500 people. Welcome on in. Welcome to the end of the Banjo race. I guess they're, they're going to be piling in for the Odyssey run. Oh, yeah. It's right after this, so stick around. Uh, we're going to have a really, really solid... Uh, Top tier runner race of uh, Odyssey any percent after this is over. So now we actually open the six, 765 note door. Yeah. All right, so Stiv's got to play the trivia game. We've got Helfos doing tip top. We're going to have probably Hag and King doing Vile at the same time. Can't imagine that uh, anything would change about these guys' uh, placings at the moment. They're kind of wrapping up this run. We're looking like it's going to be Stiv in first, King in second, Hag in third, and Elfos joining in at fourth. But you never know. Uh, King could lose to Vile, get chopped, and have to do the level all over again. That could happen to Hag too. So, so Stiv's going for the safe strat here and actually answering this grunty question first. Um, because he didn't want to get uh, an answer wrong on the Joker Square. The Joker Square gives you two free passes on questions, and those are saved for the timer questions, the timer squares, because those give you a mini game, and those just take a long time to do. And, um... Good thing he did, because he got a grunty question on the Joker Square. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up getting it right anyway, so that was good. Yeah, he probably had his pattern all set by the time he got there. But Yeah, like, if you don't get those Joker that. questions, you have like two options, and both of them really suck. You can either you can either fall off into the lava immediately, which means you reset your Furnace Fun board, which wastes about a minute because of the, uh, the squares in the beginning. Uh, or you can decide to do the two mini game squares, which really are like not good either, because the mini game squares can range from anything from killing the Zubas, which is probably the fastest one, to doing Mr. Vile, which is like another like minute of time loss. So, yeah, um, and then Joker and Death squares can pull from any of the questions, so uh, you got to really know your stuff and don't get those questions wrong. <laughs> yeah. And something that you can do to save time here, uh, but it's a little bit risky, is uh, skipping the sound animation for the sound questions, like for what Tiv's going to be doing here, because you can kind of do it based off of the answer choices that you get. Um, obviously, Treasure, Rusty Bay, or whatever it was, is not a level in the game, so you know that's not the right answer. Yeah, the game is really nice with the way that Grunty asks you questions because she never like mixes up the answers on you with the wrong answers to the right answers. So as long as you've memorized 
what the right answer is um, compared to the wrong answers, you can actually answer all of those questions without listening to a sound cue. Um, so actually like the music cues that I always skip, it, she says like, listen closely. And if you're told, tell me where you, where you would be if you heard this music. And it's always like kind of the music themes that aren't exactly the world themes, but are kind of like the new themes, depending on where you are. Kind of like inside the Zubba's nest, inside the, the bear's igloo, you know, those kind of things. Those are all really easy to answer without so the So Stiv, Stiv did Furnace Fun skip there on um, that Death Square. Uh, actually, if you answer it wrong on like the very corner of that death square, it actually sends you back onto the board. Just uh, the the um, you know, the way they programmed it was not perfect, and you actually can just run to the end of the mini game because it assumes you're dead, and it kills all of the invisible walls. So Viv's able to just run to the end there. Um, and that, that's actually a potential for time loss because you can be too far into the corner and then you won't land on the ledge. So uh, thankfully he was in the right spot. He got it. He's heading into the grunny fight. Yeah, and, that's uh, probably one of the worst feelings is being on PV pace and then falling in the lava. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You know, this is just a, this is a very technical boss fight. There's uh, there's several phases. Um, right now, he's pooping eggs on here so that he doesn't have to actually shoot them. But makes them fly right into them. Yeah, so you got to do this four times. She goes to all four sides of the uh, tower. So you got to make sure you hit her three times. When she kind of does that jolt off the broomstick, that's when you know she's she's been hit all three times. And something that uh, you, you use a few times in this fight uh, to help you avoid damage is after you do a beak bust, like what you're going to do right here, you don't actually take damage from uh, the the homing attack. So you can use that to avoid that damage. Go for some YOLO beak bombs here and uh, does them really well. And he's got all four of them all in a row. This is a really, really good beak bomb section. Yeah, if you're if you've got the timing, if you're able to um, if you're able to hit Grunty while she's still firing her shots, it makes it a little bit easier for you to um, hit her. So when she starts going around in that circle, that you got to kind of be worried. So Hag finishing up Vile um, while Helpos has just started. Stiv got hit by that fireball, so he wasn't able to get off the egg poops in time for the Jinjo statues. Um, yeah, he actually only got off two of the three eggs. Yeah, so you're able to poop more eggs into those uh, statues as they're rising up. Uh, the orange Jinjo specifically, because it's the first one. And you're able to skip the animation there during that first cutscene, but still got hit. These fireballs have a little bit of a, a delayed um, hitbox there with the explosion. Still doing a good job here shooting these gingers from really far away. And then staying underneath Grunty so that the gingers hit her faster. Hag finishing up with Bubble Gloop now. King doing his, uh, his grunty questions, his pattern. Helpful's got to be a little worried here. He's got to make sure that Vile doesn't collect a couple more. Oh, All right. my God. Manages really to close. save it. Oh, I can't imagine if Helpful's had to be this level yeah, again. Yeah, um, a tie also is not a win. A tie equals a loss. So he would have chomped on, on uh, Helpful's there. And Stiv doing the Ginginator here. Finishing up. Does gets hit by the homing attack. So he's a couple seconds, but that, that's it. Alright. So 20340 on the timer, but I think it was about 16 seconds early. So yeah, 203 like 20 something. Pretty good for a race, to be honest. Good for good for him. Yeah. Not too bad at all. A good GG to Stiv. GG to Stiv as the winner. Get some, get some GG's in the chat, please. Yeah, very, very good race. Good run. So now the next person to finish should be King. Coming up on the back end of Furnace Fun. He's only got uh, three more questions before he goes for the skip. I can now entering Furnace Fun. Oh no. 
He's fine. I think he's just... Stiv's just really fast at entering in those, uh... Right? The gruntsy question things. Came right. with a random, random kind of setup there, but it worked. Yep. Most most runners usually go for the lining of the feet. They line up the feet on the borders. But King made it work. Made it work for him. Doesn't go wide enough. Accidentally hits the cauldron. Wastes a little bit of time. Not too big of a deal. So we've got Helfo's entering Furnace Fun now. Hag has got his Joker squares. <laughs> and and King, King is going is for the dog. Biggest, the biggest memer out there because he knows he's ahead is gonna. Oh no no. Uh, he tries it once and says no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so technically, if you were to get dog skip first try, maybe even second try, you would save some time. But yeah, there's just no point in doing it in hundred percent. He accidentally activates the gold <laughs> feather door. <laughs> Which is really the summation of this race is um, everybody used uh, way more gold feathers than they usually do <laughs> with yeah. all the things that happen. So right, well you don't need gold feathers for the granny fights. So that's why it's funny. Yeah. All right, Mrs. Ding pot skip. He presses the Great start button there. because he's tilted. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, to real quickly explain dog skip, what uh, Secret Hero Man mentioned here. For those who are, not, who are not familiar with the any percent category is you can actually uh, walk into that corner there by the door and clip out of bounds. And when you do that, you're able to do a mid-air jump, which gives you that one frame to jump mid-air. And if you, if you do that uh, with also some precise positioning around the door, you're able to skip it. Um, but in 100%, in it only saves a little time because you have to get everything any percent. It saves all those 25 jiggies that you would need to get. Yeah, it's really, really important skip for the any percent categories of this game. King doing a good shot, lining up these eggs. Hag Struggling like to get a little top bit, A little bit uh, high on that thing there. Makes oh, it! Barely, almost. He almost fell in the out of there. All right, King going into the beat bomb section now. Ends up getting the first one. A little low on that second one, but makes it work. YOLO oh, for the third one makes that was it work. Really YOLO one. All right, good beat bombs from King. Hag now going for dog skip. <laughs> I think they're in a call, and they're like, oh, we're going to do this for the meme. Yeah, so dog skip, really difficult because you you drop out for one frame, and you only have that one frame to jump again past the door and onto the uh, thing pot. So not, not a very friendly trick. Hag misses it. <laughs> so he's going to go back to the beginning of the section here. And I bet you Hag goes for it again. I bet you he does. No. no. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's going for it again. <laughs> he doesn't even know the setup. Come on, Hag. What are you he's doing? not even zooming his camera all the way out. He's trying. He doesn't know what he's doing. Let me. Can I get a type one in the chat for Haganator's dog skip? Alright, he's had enough. I, I, I think King finally... He knows, he knows how Foes is coming up on him. Yeah. So he's gonna go ahead and open it up. <laughs> now we got a good uh, a good uh, end of the race here. We got... Uh, uh, help us triggering the, the cauldron fight. as well. And Hag is, or King's dropping frames like crazy. Here we go. He's finishing up though. He's going into the final section with the Ginginator. Helpo's not wasting any time opening up the puzzle. It could come down to the fight. Oh, a lot of this fight could go wrong. Missing I mean, all that bombs. has to do is miss some beat bombs, yeah. Missing or even worse, really soft lock on the Jinjo statues. Knock on wood. All right, good, good Jinjinator from King here. He's going to finish it up. He's dropping frames. We can't exactly see if he's finished or not. I don't know. 
It's plus. <laughs> I'm assuming he's not yeah, he Okay. All right, coming in with a 209, like 15 for King. Good. King secures the second place. That's actually only like a minute behind his PB, which is funny. Oh no, did Helpo screw up this? Okay, no, he didn't. That was just the first time. All right. Nice job, King, securing that second place, even though he had the worst time coming in. So good on him. We're going to see yeah. Hag going into the Beak Bomb section here. Gets the first one, but pops her right. Oh, good setup, though. He, I guess he knows what to do if he pops her right. And oh, he misses! He goes wide on the third! Okay. All yeah, right, he's, he's good. He's still good. for that one, so he, he's good. All right, finishes up the beak bomb section. Very good. Pro tip here, don't aim down when you're beak bombing. If you miss and you land on the platform, you can crash land and die. Help us hitting the end of the broomstick. Makes it work. Goes a little bit yellow for the second one. Makes it work. Good. And... All right, there we go. Right. Nice. Gets all good, of them. Good beat bombs from him. All right. Had going for the Jinjo cutscene skip. Eggs look good. Gets yep. it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> King with a scuffed second. <laughs> Agreed. We had some pretty scuffed runs for sure. <laughs> Sorry, Hag looking like he's getting the Jinjo statues from pretty far away. Helfo's missing the cutscene skip. There you go, Hag getting the rest here. A little bit of a tricky cutscene skip there too, because you got Grunty shooting fireballs at you as well, so. Yeah. Gotta practice that a lot. Yeah, meow, meow. All right, so. Uh... If you'll turn your attention to King's stream really quick, you'll see some very, very important characters coming on the screen at this moment. Um. Probably probably the number one thing that's a reward for finishing this game. Having Melon Girl walk across the uh, the screen <laughs> there. But uh One last little thing and some people don't know this is uh, this section where she's shooting fireballs at you right before Ginginator. If you get hit, that section restarts, she'll shoot five more. Oh, hat going for some wind switches there! He's going crazy! <laughs> <laughs> a flat flip ground pound to dodge a couple. Alright, All right. finishes it up with a low 212. Very good. Helpos is going to be coming right behind him here. And a couple more shots. There you go. Oh, wow. Another 212. And that is the end of the BK 100% race. Congrats to all of our runners. Yeah. Coming in with two 12s. You know, that wasn't too bad. I know that I said, you know, 210 pace, but uh, that was pretty good. GG to all runners. There were zero unintended. Actually, I guess there was that one unintended death by Helfos in Click Clock Wood, which cost him third place. But um, other than that, really, really solid run from all of our runners. So. Yeah, really good shelling from everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you're interested in Banjo-Kazooie, please come hang out, ask us questions, join the Discord, you know, follow us, tweet us on Twitter, anything if you want. We've got plenty of resources to help you get started running the game. And uh, yeah, we're a really open, welcoming community. We have a lot of fun. So hope you guys had fun. Uh, Brad, anything else you want to say? You know, if, if man, if, if Stiv missed one more thing, he would have... He would have just come super close to losing that first place there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That, that lifeboat jump almost killed the whole thing. Yeah, it was quite the. No, that was that was a it was an interesting race. Up. At least it wasn't the you know the same uh, leads the whole the whole time. You know there was a, there was a lead change towards the end there with Helfo's um, unfortunately missing that softlock trap. All right, so they're telling me they want to bring in Stiv. So let me uh, let me try to get him in here real quick. Well, Steve, Steve told me that we're gonna we're gonna not do that. So oh, did they say they're not gonna do? We're just gonna. They're oh, I think it's good. They're just gonna raid. Great. Well then, guys. Unfortunately, no interview with Stiv, but please stick around. We got a really awesome Super Mario Odyssey run coming for you next once they get it all set up. So don't go anywhere. 
thanks for having us on GSA. We hope you guys had fun. You guys have a great rest of your night. Thanks. See you guys later.